A normal car turns into a patrol car. Not fast, but cheap to drive. Right. You can eventually actually learn your way around town. The place is actually pretty big. Agent Morgan, get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? Right? Seriously, George, get off my case. I just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. Hmm. Emily's so nice. Yeah, come on, George, give him some slack. Fucking asshole. Well, then, Agent York, <laughs> let's get going. Sure. Sounds good. Right, I need to put the windscreen wipers on. That's on page up, because, obviously. Right. Camera, please! Right. Trying to do a three-point turn in this thing is not necessarily easy. There we go. He just doesn't turn the steering wheel enough for it. Right, let's get out of the parking lot. So we need to go to the hospital. Luckily, we do have a... Uh, uh. Let's talk to people. Agent Morgan, I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely, flying all over the country alone? I must say, I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Unfortunately, relationships and I are fleeting strangers. I don't get on very well with women, you might be surprised to hear. That's because you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to treat women carefully. I like a thin away. crystal wine glass. If you don't, they can cut scars on your face, just like yours, right? Uh, George, is this an interrogation? The hell am I guy? I see you're a seasoned professional. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. Guys, if you give me a few seconds, so, I... Emily, Where the hell are we going? Tell me. This way. Yeah, here we is go. Is there really Ooh. a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is small to your city eyes, but any gathering of people leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray pets. You're too fixated on violent crimes. Our job is to guide the people along the correct path, first and foremost. Now that's what I consider to be my duty as the sheriff of Greenvale. Zach, there he is. The monarch in all his glory. Kind of makes me glad that I wasn't born here. Did you say something, Agent Morgan? No, nothing, George. L literally, I'm next to you. How do you not hear me shit well, talk, you, George? We're in the middle of a homicide investigation. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. Okay, which right now is driving. Right, so I think we've managed to work our way to the correct road. Considering this damn town seems to just end. It's like one of my city skyline. Ugh! Don't worry, guys, we're fine. You all good? Everyone good? Yep, no, no one bats an eyelid, it's fine. Let's just carry on driving. See, now we, we can actually swap the camera if we want to, so we can see a little bit better this way. Uh, that's the way to the hotel, isn't it? Yep, so we want to keep going this way. Yeah, speedy! We can actually run out of gas, which is not ideal either, because then we'd have to either walk or do one of those SOS players, I think. Some fair whack of the game is just driving on these roads. That's sort of half the appeal is just, you know, having this uh, what's the right word? Again, just relax, sort of do do it as you please kind of attitude the game has. There's no rush to anything. If you miss a target, like, if we missed it today, for example, oh, like there's a flower we should get. I don't know if we can get out. Can we, will George let us out? I think George is actually, is George going to let us out? Because if we can get out, I think we want to grab that flower. By that, I mean I need to get back in the car. If you're wandering off, then we'll go on ahead. We don't have time to mess around. Okay, I'll meet up with you later. Agent York, the hospital closes at 2100. Please make it inside before then. Do, I, do you leave me the car? Yeah, they left me the car, sweet. So, we get back in the car. And we turn around, which is a feat in itself. Like, because you look at the, the... These cars don't drive very well, as you can see. Ugh. And then what we want to do is go along here. There should be like a little flower, and I'm pretty sure, and I can't remember why, but I'm pretty sure we want to get this for later. So let's just park up. Any Anytime you're ready, York. Anytime you're ready. No rush, man. Pop. 
Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? There certainly they is. Told us to be there before 2100. But don't worry about that. Let's do whatever you want to do. Like, that is the game in a nutshell. Don't worry about that. Let's do what Let's you want to do. There's something very mesmerizing about it. I wonder what it's called. I'll take one with me and ask someone later. You got the flower of no name. I can't remember why we want this, but I do know we want this. Maybe for side quest or something. Ooh, they parked my car better than I did. Score. Right, back off to the hospital. They went on ahead, and we're not that far away. It'll take us, uh, I don't know, maybe a minute or two together. To be honest, it adds a feel to the town that it's actually a, more like a real place, you know? That there's a bit more to it than just, you know, San Andreas, like, style. Everything's next door to each other. We actually have to make a move. Uh, the only thing is, getting into the actual uh, big map requires a few extra clicks, which is a little bit of a nuisance. Could be nice if hitting M would just bring up the whole map. I'm on the wrong side of the road. I forget. We're in America. Anyway, George isn't here now, so we can hit the sirens. Woo woo! There's the hospital, I think. Dead ahead. Speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83. Directed by Douglas McCown. Right. It was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth. I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. I wonder how the sequel turned out. The best thing is, you'll notice here, by the way, if we cut them off... Zach, we're here. Let's continue our chat. Exactly. It just says, we'll continue our chat later. And it, it means you don't miss any by accident. It just does it next time you're in the car. It's a really good idea, and I wish more games would do that. The hospital looks very spooky in the middle of nowhere. A very convenient place Agent for a hospital. Morgan, have you no respect for rules and protocol? We were waiting for you, and now you try to go in by yourself. Oh, George. I didn't see you in the parking lot, so I thought I'd wait inside. They're both very upset. Watch it from now on. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's raining. Why are you standing outside? I don't like inconsiderate people who think that they're above the rules. And I'm sure I've made this point clear by now. Calm down, George. He probably just got lost on his way here and rushed in. Right, Agent Inner? Exactly. Let's go inside then. Look, everything takes so long to sort of manner, like, do the mannerisms for. It makes it so funny. Like, conversation, like, George just shrugs heavily for, like, 20 minutes. Like, mmm. Hello, Sheriff. Freckly Fiona. Hello, Freckly Fiona. Fiona. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? That happens. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. Nice to meet you, Fiona. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But how did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Well, saw that out, George. Besides, that scar on your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. Again, the music just sounds like someone's whistling randomly. It's great. You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. Just However, by the way, that nurse is sticking her hand in the drawer and back out again, like inside girl. it. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous, evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all. Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. It's an important commentary, Thank you, though. Agent York. Cool. So, now we can, like, wander around the hospital a little bit and talk to people. There are actually people here, and it does kind of look like a hospital entryway. I'll give them that. So, we can check the weather again, but we don't really need to bother. What about Emily? 
Why? What's going on? What? Uh, sure. What about you, George? Got anything profound to say? Let's go to the computer room. We need to find Usher. Okay. Ugh. So this hospital uh, has flat do not enter 2D signs, which is great. Uh, it's not it's not actually huge, though it is uh, pretty easy to get confused with the layout. We couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer. And a card key already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zack, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? Well, I hope so. The king takes... So, I'm guessing we just got to... Uh, so, the king takes the... Oh. Oops, no. Uh, cancel. So, the king takes the rook, meets the bishop, takes uh, the knight, then takes the pawn from the queen. Yay! I mean, that wasn't very difficult, was it? Checkmate. Look how, look how happy he is! <laughs> the doctor awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. How simple? I mean, why why not just then it's time tell us in an investigation? It's all good. Of this little game. Nah. You got the card key for the underground floor. Score. So we need to head down to the morgue. I mean, why not, I guess? Is there anything in here that we can nick? We can observe Emily. What's it say? She's quite pretty. She'd look better wearing something more fashionable rather than this dull uniform. Agree, Zach? What about George? Quite a serious character. Though he likes to show off and it's too easy to compete, which may be what it takes. Oop. So luckily, it, so it sort of shows us where we ought to go. So the game's quite nice about its uh, waypoints, actually. Bonk. Hello, Fiona. Well, what I'm going to do is make a save. Do I want to save? Yes, please. Let's go down and see the doctor quickly. Oosh. Now this looks promising. Or not? Where's the downstairs of this place? Nope, that's locked. There's got to be some stairs somewhere that takes us underground. So goodies are always nice. You usually ah hit the stairs. You usually warded for looking around. There's either like, little cards to pick up and other such weird shit that shouldn't be in the world, but it is. Here we go. We have found the doctor. Beep. Let's just barge in and say hello to him. Place is designed like a mace. Ooh, goodies. What have we got down here? Another telephone. Another random badge. Let's go inside. The dissecting room. We do have to analyse the body after all. Asha, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? Asha Johnson, the doctor. The only one, I believe. This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Asha Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone calls me that. <laughs> it's Emily Smirks in the background there. 
Very well. Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle Why are we the zooming task? in on George? I see. What? Why? Well, it was pretty fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Guys, de dead go? Should we, uh... We don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Well... Everyone looks like he just screamed at them, and George it's just says quite calmly. Try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. Well, that too. Did I say this got weird? Yeah. From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Everyone looks at their right hands there. Yep, I've got a right hand, definitely. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation, due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. Which, which is, Doctor? The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Nasty. Nasty way to go. Everyone agrees, I think. Which means... She was cut up while she was still alive. Yeah. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean and with no skin cells from the attacker. She also doesn't appear to have been bound nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. Can't doctor out with it. Is her tongue been cut out? Emily's looking very shocked. The perpetrator cut out Hannah's tongue. Yeah, yeah. I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness, and then the killer killed her. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. Either that or a truly hardcore sadist. So you don't know, Dot. You're just kind of guessing, aren't you? Could be that, or they might have been an elephant. He must oh. get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. Now, he watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usha, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. What he said. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed. Right after the movie on TV ended, so... Around 1 a.m.? What movie was it? <laughs> An American Werewolf in London. Good film. Uh, directed by John Landis, 1981. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. 
Right, so, I don't know why I was staring at the doctor there, but let's actually stare at the correct person, shall we? The dead one. So let's check out her face. Uh, Traces of evaporated liquid around the eyes. She must have cried before she was murdered. Yeah, go figure. Uh, Beautiful blonde hair, stunning even in death. Uh, She's wearing neatly faked fingernails. Uh, Judging from the impression, she was holding something in her hand, but it was removed around six hours after death. Uh, the object was circular, with a relief shaped like a piece mark. Uh, Anna's body's lying on the table. Well, yeah. Is there anything else we can... Uh, the tongue has been removed. Look at the edge of the stump. Ooh, a turkey sandwich! Mmm, just what I wanted. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zack, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining, but you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. Ew. <laughs> we'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. It's kind of framed like a TV show, which is actually really interesting. Like the way the camera angles are done, it, it's ju it is just like uh, watching like an episode of the X-Files or, well, Twin Peaks. <laughs> you know, it's just some... Jack oh dear. Zach. It's a shame, but our old-time all-American sightseeing tour just came to an end. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. Dun dun dun. We got us a serial killer on our hands. There you go. Amazing, huh? I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. Oh. So everyone just sort of shuffles around us, Mitch. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Do you want, okay. Do you want to pick up your seats? I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes queen, his rook takes your queen, then your knight takes rook, and checkmate. Huh? Oh. I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. Oh, my first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. Yay! Thanks, York. But guess what? Oh, now we got ghosties, because, I don't know, we needed a cigarette. Hmm? Huh? Huh? 
You think you would have noticed the giant vines, but uh Nope. Zack, they're here. They're here. They certainly are. Uh luckily we can say before we finish. So I'm gonna end the set there just before we go attack some more spooky ghosts. I really hope you've been enjoying this. It's like I said, it's a very different paced kind of game. That's what makes it quite interesting, I think. Uh, and it's also crazy. It's completely and utterly insane, which is also half the fun. Uh, yeah. So we've had a what have we done so far? We've had a little wander around town with the terrible car driving mechanics. We've popped into the hospital. We've had some coffee that said FK. And we've discovered that the body has seeds in it. Mm. So the case is now officially ours and George has to help us out. No more whinging. Well, he'll probably whinge, but you know. And now the ghosts have reappeared. Spooky. Mm. Yes, I really hope you'll all join me next time. And we'll go through the hospital shooting as we go. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all then, okay? Bye-bye.